we are going to be looking at testing of our faith and it's a lot so i'm going to just get right into it now when we look at faith i believe that um pastor leslie i believe that this is an area that is very familiar that is well known the area of faith but today i'm going to be looking at testing the testing of our faith i find so many christians and so many times we don't like this area we don't like this process of testing of our faith but according to scripture it is scripture your faith might or will be tested but i want to emphasize this the lord does not tempt us the holy spirit or god can allow you to be tempted but he does not tempt us but according to scripture we can see that the lord can test our faith and as we are going to go deep in scripture i hope that you can get to a place of understanding this area of your faith being tested now what is testing what is this thing about testing you know it gives me so much um revelation when i look at um you know uh studying you know when we study at schools and we study you know you study for for something you you study you are taught by i don't know a teacher or someone um some of you are even right now studying as i'm talking you know at the end of the day which i believe you are going to be doing a test online regarding the bible school so the testing is actually going to be in a place whereby it it helps you to understand and it helps you to realize Realize how much you have actually learned so spiritually it's scripture that children of God spiritually will be tested and it is very important to embrace that journey to embrace that process so many times we run away from that process and we like to say no it's the devil no you can be tested the moment you are studying you are a child of God studying the word you are walking in your walk of faith yes you will be tested but when you are tested I want us to remember that the Lord does not leave you and the lord does not test you beyond what you are capable of the lord knows what you are capable of and will not test you beyond that and as i'm talking about this i would like us to go into scripture so testing is proving as i've said and that by which something is tried or proved it is a test okay so you sit for this test to prove okay to prove your knowledge to prove um, your commitment to the Lord. Methods of testing that we can see in scripture. And believe me, we are going to be looking at the Old Testament. We are going to be looking at the New Testament. We have so many scriptures. Let me get right into it. By demanding methods of testing. The first method is by demanding great sacrifice. We could see and we saw this when the Lord asked of uh, Abraham. And we can see Genesis chapter 22 verse 1 to 2. Now it came to pass after this thing that God tested Abraham said to him Abraham and he said here I am and he said take now your son your only son Isaac whom you love go to the land of Merah and offer him where there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains on which I shall tell you we can see that there was a demand of a great sacrifice I don't know if any of us can put ourselves in the press of Abraham but let me tell you something after waiting for a son for so many years I'm talking about so many years and finally getting a son and God himself who has given you this son asks you to take this son and sacrifice him I don't think there's a lot of people who would have gone through that you know what I believe that a lot of us would be saying it is not God it's the devil but you know what Abraham went through? Abraham allowed the Lord to actually test him, allowing and using his son as a sacrifice. You know, and that, that, every time I think about that, it is beyond. And I believe that is why uh, we say that our faith, you know, and we always proclaim, uh, you know, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a fa Abraham, the father of faith. If Abraham could take his only son and allow God and walk and obey to go and sacrifice his only son Isaac. We can see another method of testing that we call by leading men in a difficult way. And we can see Deuteronomy chapter 8 and verse 2. And you shall remember that the Lord your God led you all the way these 40 years in the wilderness to humble you and to test you. 
to humble you and to test you, to know what was in your heart, whether you would keep his commandments or not. Yes, there is a difficult way whereby you can enter the wilderness as a child of God. But the word of God says here to test and to humble you, that you were allowed to go through the wilderness. We could see the scripture relating to the children of God, but I also want to relate it to us as children of God. Yes, you might right now be going through a wilderness, but I want you to be understanding of this, that you know when the word of God says to humble you and also to test you, to know what is in your heart. Yes, it is possible for the Holy Spirit and God to want to test you, to know what is in your heart. Are you after his things or are you after his presence? Are you after his love or you are after the things that come from the Lord? Yes, you can be tested through the time of the wilderness. Also, we can see another method of testing which we give um, by giving opportunities for choice. Uh, First Kings chapter 3 and verse 5. At Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night, and God said, Ask, shall, shall I give? Ask, what? Ask, what shall I give? And we can see here amazingly, amazingly, I also do believe that if the Lord appeared to any of us and he says to any of us, you know, ask what you want, ask what you will from me. And you know, it's the Lord Almighty. Believe me, I have a feeling we will be laying down the whole world. We will be asking for, I don't know, <laughs> the weirdest, the most weirdest things. But look at Solomon. Solomon, when you read down there about Solomon, he was given choice and God did not impose choice upon him, but God gave him a choice. And you know what? Solomon asked for wisdom. You know, sometimes you might be tested, even though sometimes the Lord knows what you are going to ask, but the Lord gives you choice. So we can see here also another method of testing can be by give, by proposing hard tasks. John chapter 6 verse 5 to verse 6 then Jesus lifted up his eyes and seeing a great multitude coming toward him he said to Philip where shall we buy bread that these may eat verse 6 but this he said to test him for he himself knew what we would do so sometimes he can be to propose hard tasks to actually test you okay so you can look at this particular scripture here in john chapter 5 6 and 7 whereby jesus is asking philip you know what jesus knew that <laughs> philip couldn't get anywhere philip was not gonna get anywhere bread he wasn't gonna find anything to actually feed all those multitudes that were standing there but you know what still philip is still jesus asked philip the question so you have to understand sometimes Testing might be to propose hard tasks to you as a child of God. Also, sometimes it might be for permitting men to suffer. Testing of our faith might be to permit men to suffer. And let's see Acts chapter 16, verse 23 to 24. And when they had laid many stripes on them, they threw them into prison, commanding the jailer to keep them securely. Having received such a charge, he put them into the inner prison, fastened their feet in the socks. It is so important that we children of God sometimes run away from our suffering. Let me tell you something. There is suffering. Even as a child of God, you might face suffering. But you know what? When you face suffering, you have to take um, a faith and know that the Lord is with you. And in that, we are going to be looking at some of the things that come out of this testing of our faith. But let us understand, so many times people say, if you are suffering, it's the devil, it's the enemy. Sometimes it might be the testing of your faith. How much can you take for the Lord? How much can you take for your faith for Jesus Christ? How much can you stand for his name? You know, he suffered for us, laid down his life for us. How much as a child of God can you suffer? Are you going to give in or you are going to stand in and remain in Christ Jesus Christ? Sometimes we also see other methods of testing and we are calling them here also permitting temptation. James chapter 1 verse 2 to verse 3. My brethren, count it all joy when you fall into various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience. You know what we are calling it here? 
permitting temptation as i said in the beginning the lord does not tempt us you know he permits <laughs> he permits temptation but when you look at james here james is saying to us count it all joy count it all joy when you fall into several temptations when you fall into several trials count it all joy and it's very important to understand that you can be tempted and you can also not go into sin you know it is so important to understand so many people say when i'm tempted i'll, I'll go into sin no you can be tempted and you can still not fall into sin. We saw Jesus Christ in his 40 days of fasting. He was tempted. The enemy tempted him. But you know what is so important? You could see Jesus Christ using the word of God. I mean, Jesus is the word. Jesus himself is the word. But here was Jesus using the word of God against temptation. And you know what? When we are tempted, it is so important to understand that sometimes we might be permitted, you know. We might be permitted by the Lord to be tempted but we have the word of God we have to counter attack the enemy with the word of God not with tears not with our words but with the word of God the enemy knows the arrows the fierce arrows are the word of God so how do we overcome that let us get into the word of God let us read the word of God when the enemy comes to tempt us let us use the arrows the fierce arrows the sharp arrows of the word of God that we saw Christ himself the word himself himself using the word of God when he was tempted. We can also see another method here uh, of temptation, uh, sorry, another method of testing our faith. And another one here we can see is also by a strange plan. And it's so amazing that we are calling us a strange plan because there are so many strange things in the word of God or in the Bible that you look at and you ask yourself, oh goodness, why, why did the Lord ask? so and so to do this and when we look at this strange plan for joshua we can see joshua chapter 6 verse 3 you shall march around the city all men of war you shall go all around the city once that um that's uh, this you shall do six days you know when we see this I was reading, you know, the walls of Jericho, and that's Joshua chapter 6. You know, when, when, the, when, when, when the Lord gave uh, the whole instruction to Joshua about the walls of Jericho and how they were locked, people couldn't come in, people couldn't go out, because these people were so scared of the children of Israel, and they knew what the Lord had done, you know, the Jordan. They knew what the Lord has done with the Red Sea and everything. But you know what is so amazing also is the, 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 the instruction the Lord gave them, you know, I, I, I sat there and I asked myself, you know, when we call it strange, it is really strange. You know, when I read Joshua, I look at myself and the Lord says to Joshua that, you know, they, they should just march, you know, seven times around the wall. And, and the instructions are just, you know, and I just went like, wow, this man here obeyed the instructions without a question. And the people of that time also that he was leading, obeyed. I don't know if they objected, but according to the word of God, they obeyed. You know, it was so strange. You don't even touch the walls. You know, you are going to just go around those walls seven times or should i say for seven days and then the seventh day they had to go around seven times and then like shout and the walls fell down you know and it's so strange and we have to understand also here it can be god's strange plan there are so many strange plans of god that you cannot explain but we know that we have seen so much victory through those strange plans so many strange plans that you cannot even explain to your fellow christians you know they ask you why are you doing that can you explain it can you go to scripture and explain it you're like no i was led by the holy spirit i feel i was led by the holy spirit but you know what you cannot explain that plan but the lord has given you the plan dropped it in your spirit and convicted your spirit that you should go ahead and obey and it is also important to understand that it can also come by a strange plan and that is the testing of your faith as a child of god by also reducing your army and i think highly we can see this when it came to gideon Judges chapter 7 verse 7 then the lord said to gideon by the 300 men 
who lapped, I will save you and deliver the Midians into your hand. Let all the other people go, every man to his place. So it is so important that we, you know, we do have all our humanly plans. We have our laid out plans. We have our laid out, you know, humanly plans of how we will have victory. And here comes the Lord. Look at Gideon. The Lord tells him to just reduce his army. And, and when you look at these scriptures here, it is just so amazing that when you look at it, the Lord wanted to have his own victory. He wanted to have his own glory so that Gideon does not look at this army and go like wow our army did it I mean look at our army it was so big but even to the process of the Lord reducing the army step by step that was another mystery on its own the Lord reducing the army reducing the army reducing the army that was another mystery on its own and we can see here that it can be to reduce your army and you can send you can bring it back to us as children of God Highly, it's also about breaking down those walls of your, your ability, your skill. I, I can do this. I've got this. And you know what? The Lord can strap you of all that so that he can show you that he is God. So that he can show you that I can still win on your behalf. And you can still give me the glory. So that when you look back, you don't say it was my energy. It was my skill. It was my expertise. It was my family. It was my friend. It was my church. So it is so important to understand that there can be a time whereby the Lord wants to reduce all that around you. So that the Lord can receive the glory. It can be a testing of your faith we can also see here by depending on a poor widow first kings chapter 17 and verse 9 arise go to zarephath which belongs to sidon dwell there see i have commanded a widow there to provide for you you can see here also the lord is using this tactic when it came here in first kings chapter 17 verse 9 to show this uh, you know his child that you know what I am still going to remain God. And you can depend on this poor widow, you know. And you know what is amazing? When we look at the next one by demanding her last food, which is 1 Kings chapter 17, verse 13. And Elijah said to her, do not fear, go and do as you have said, but make me a small cake from it first. Bring it to me. Afterwards, make some for yourself and for your son. From this small cake, cake from this poor widow the lord still was able to test and i'm saying to test the faith of elijah and also to test the faith of this widow you know this widow because i i really believe i truly believe it was me you know and i was elijah and this is a poor widow who has given me a story of i am actually the last thing i'm left with is to eat with my son and to die and you know what if it was me at <laughs> that time i would have said to the poor widow you know what Let's, let's forget about God and let's forget about you giving me your cake. You know what? Just go and have your cake. You know, have the, the, the last part you have and, and eat and be alive. But here is two ways obedience. God is also testing the faith of Elijah, but at the same time is testing the faith of this poor widow. Poor widow doesn't have a lot, but at the same time has to give away that small one that he has. Cook it and give it to the man of God, representing giving it to the Lord. Also by requiring what appeared to be a useless work. Second Kings chapter 3 verse 16. And he said, that says uh, the Lord, make this valley full of ditches. It is so important also to see that by requiring what appeared to be a useless work, there are so many things, and I'm saying again from reference, even in my own life, there are so many things that I, I feel led to do in my spirit, and they might look like useless, you know? <laughs> you, you look at what you're doing, and you ask yourself, okay, I don't know why I'm doing this, but I feel so led to do it. And we can also see that it can be also a testing of your faith. Sometimes you might even eventually after you have you are done with doing whatever you did, you know, you still ask yourself, all right, okay, so uh, Lord, can you, Holy Spirit, can you tell me what that was about? And you know what? Several times I've not had an answer from the Holy Spirit. But you know what I've seen? Eventually, after a time, eventually, after a long time or after a time, I've forgotten about that. And then the Holy Spirit brings it to me. Oh, then I get to learn a lesson. Then I get to actually use that experience to help someone else. 
So some of the things that we do as children of God might look useless, you know. You, <laughs> this guy is, is, is told to dig ditches, you know, and he's asking himself, I believe, maybe, maybe he wasn't asking himself, but I fully believe he's asking himself, why am I digging these ditches actually what are they for and it is so important to obey regardless of how you feel regardless of how useless that act feels obey the lord sometimes you will not even know sometimes even we will leave this earth without knowing but let me tell you something one day we will get to know why that was done and also the other person it might be done for someone else that you have not intercepted your you know your path with but you did it and someone else's life will be blessed but that person did not actually meet to tell you what happened how you change their lives the act that you did how it changed their lives and we have to understand when the holy spirit of god tells us to do something however useless senseless it looks like do it do it because god does not miss do it regardless of how useless or senseless it looks like also by requiring intensive preparation with no blessing in sight second kings chapter 4 and verse 3 then he said go borrow vessels from everywhere from all your neighbors empty vessels do not gather just a few here you can see an intensive preparation period and you can see here with no blessing in sight. You know, there are so many things that the Lord or the Holy Spirit might lead us to do. And you know what? And that can be a preparation. You don't know why you are doing it. But look at these guys. Look at how the instruction that was given to them to go gather vessels. And you know what? The oil has not yet been multiplied. The oil is so little. But here they are. They are being told to gather as many vessels as they can as many vessels as they can but you know what is so amazing here they obeyed they went ahead and they gathered borrowed from all the neighbors as many vessels as they could and you know in my mind what i think about is what is what are the neighbors asking as they are borrowing all these vessels, I believe that the neighbors are asking them, why are you taking our vessels? Where are you taking our pots? What are you going to be doing with them? And I believe maybe they had an answer or maybe they just kept quiet. But imagine you telling your neighbor, we are borrowing all these vessels because uh, we are going to have oil and the oil is going to overflow that the vessels we have in the house are not enough. You know, the neighbors, I believe, looked at them and they were like, okay, so something is going wrong here. I think these guys are running mad. Something is happening there but they obeyed they prepared for the blessing they prepared even though they did not see what was coming they prepared and the lord bless them and let us be in that place whereby we prepare for the blessing we don't have to first see the blessing in sight to actually obey we can and i say again we can prepare for that blessing we can prepare and that is also a step of faith whereby we prepare for that blessing we prepare for that season and what is coming for the lord that is going to do otherwise our faith has to be based also on preparation we cannot base our faith on sight i always say this to the uh, singles who are believing the lord for for husbands i always ask them the question when they say please pray for me i always ask them are you prepared have you prepared and you know i always have those strange stare at me you know those faces that are asking what do i need to prepare and i'm like you really need to prepare are you, are you, when he comes, if the Lord says the husband is here today, are you ready? Are you ready for that husband when he comes? Okay, now if you are believing God for a business, right now you are saying the Lord, please Lord bless me, my business. What have you prepared in place? What have you prepared? What have you set aside uh, as, as a point of faith, as a process of faith to say, Lord, this is my business plan. This is how much I am believing you. Lord, this is where I see my sight. This is, you know, and it is so important. It pleases the Holy Spirit and our Lord when we go ahead in faith. And I'm saying again, you are not being too blank by doing that. You are walking as a child of God who walks in faith. Prepare yourself for what you are believing God for. Prepare yourself. Ask the Holy Spirit, help me to prepare myself so that when you bring the blessing, I am not caught off guard. Our faith starts from preparation. So delayed, let's look at delayed blessings. 
test faith so what happens when we we get to a place whereby we have delayed blessing test faith so we can see a lot there's a lot of scriptures i'm going to try my best but believe me some scriptures i will just give them to you so we can see here where there was a delayed blessing and you know already what i'm going to be talking about the birth of a son you already know which son it is isaac okay isaac and abraham we can see here in genesis chapter 15 and verse 2 to verse 5 but abraham said lord god what will you give me seeing i go childless the hair of my house is elijah of um and abraham said look you have given me no offspring indeed one born in my house is my hair and the, and behold verse 4 the word of the lord came to him saying this one shall not be your hair but one who will come from your own body shall be your heir. And then he brought him outside and said, Look now towards heaven and count the stars. For if you are able to number them, and he said to him, So shall your descendants be. Now, when we can also see this in Genesis chapter 21 and verse 2, which I'm not going to read. But you know what? It's so amazing. I think I need to read Genesis chapter 21, verse 2. For Sarah conceived and bore Abraham a son in his old age, at the set time of which God had spoken to him. The key thing there is at the set time of which God had spoken to him. So we sometimes have our own set time. We sometimes feel, um, should I say, impatient because according to, to the physical conditions, you feel like there's such a delay. But when we look at these scriptures here, the word of God says, at the set time, Sarah bore Abraham a son. And it's so important to understand that when we see delayed blessings, it is not denial. God has not denied us the blessing. When we see delayed uh, blessings whereby our faith is being tested in that time, it is so important to understand that our God is a faithful God. He doesn't lie. He's not a man to lie or a son of man to regret. As he said, won't he fulfill? Let us understand. It might take a bit of time, but in that time as you faith is being tried try to understand it is non-denial delayed response from the lord is not denial and you know what is also amazing here when the lord took abraham outside and told him look now towards the heaven if you can count the stars and you know and this is a time where abraham is saying to god you know i don't even have one a and then god tells him to go outside you look at the stars i mean how many people would do that i believe that some of us would say no i'm not going outside i am not counting those stars i mean what do you mean by stars how many stars are there i can't even have one son you know but abraham is our father of faith he went outside counted the stars and the lord told him that is how many your descendants will be isn't that amazing isn't that amazing to understand that such a delay in in in, in a time of fulfillment but the lord still came through for isaac we can also see here that it can definitely also include a sacrifice a sacrifice provided and of course we know it's genesis chapter 22 verse 8 to verse 14 and i've already read some of it about isaac so when we there's a delayed blessing here we can see so well the life of isaac we can also see that there's also victory, you know, in delayed um, response, or should we say a delay in a blessing, delay blessing tests our faith we can see victory it also comes with victory so many times when our faith is being tested and there's such a long delay most of the times we feel like there will not be victory at the end of all this why has it taken so long but i mean look at Joshua chapter 6 and verse 12 to verse 20. Joshua rose early in the morning and the priests took up the ark of the Lord. Then the seven priests bearing seven trumpets of rams, horns before the ark of the Lord, went on continually, blew with the trumpets, and the armed men went before them, but the rear guard came after the ark of the Lord, while the priests continued blowing the trumpets. And the second day they marched around the city once and returned to the camp, so they did this seven days. Verse 15, but it came to pass on the seventh day that they arose early after 
uh, dawning of the day, marched around the city seven times in the same manner. On that day only they marched around the city seven times. Verse 16. And the seventh time it happened when the priests blew the trumpets that Joshua said to the people, Shout! For the Lord has given you the city. You can read verse 17, verse 18, 19, 20, and you can see what happened and what the Lord also cautioned the children of Israel about non defiling themselves or the accursed thing. But you know what I pick out here is that it looks that it was easy. You know, when we read about the walls of Jericho and the seven days that they had to march around it, I think sometimes we think it was a small house. Or it was a small city, but you know the the Bible talks about Jericho was a city. These guys were going around a full city. Now you just imagine us here in East London, and just imagine if someone tells you to go around the city of East London. <laughs> I assure you, how how tired would you be after the first going around this city just once? I assure you, you would be tired. Now these guys are obeying seven times, seven days, you know, until the sixth day, they are going around the city, obeying the Lord. It looked like it, looked like it delayed. You know what? I think if it was me, and I'm just saying from my perspective, I have a feeling that many of us would be asking, why does the wall fall down on the first try? Why do we have to go around seven times? Why do we have to go around seven days around this same thing? And you know what? On the seventh day, they had to also go around seven times. And they had to still wait for Joshua to tell them when to shout. And you know what is amazing? Joshua says to them, he doesn't say to them, the Lord is giving you the city. Joshua says to them, the Lord has given you the city. So it means that this was the act of, of faith. This was the testing of their faith. You know, the Lord would have done it anyway, in any other way, but the Lord required them to go through all this to see the process of the victory. Now, it is so important to understand that when delayed, you know, when we find this delayed uh, test of our um, faith, it doesn't mean that it's in vain. You can see the children of Israel here. I believe by the time these walls fell down, the children of Israel were glorifying the Lord. They were glorifying the Lord and they knew the sacrifice they had laid down for their victory. We can see here also the Messiah and Genesis chapter 3 verse 15, Luke chapter 2 verse 25 to uh, verse 30. Now I'm going to read Luke chapter 2 verse 25 to verse 30. And behold, there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simon. And this man was just and devout, waiting for the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. And it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not see death before he had seen the Lord Jesus Christ. So he came by the Spirit into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to do for him according to the custom of the law, he took him up in his arms, blessed the Lord, and said, Lord, now you are letting your servant depart in peace according to your word. For my eyes have seen your salvation. You can see Simon saying here, he has waited. The Lord has not allowed him to die before he has seen or before he sees the Messiah. But he did wait. You know, it is something that looks simple, but he waited. And you know what he waited? He waited in faith. I have seen so many people saying I'm waiting, but they have lost faith. You know that when the miracle comes, they don't even have the excitement for the miracle. So it is so important to understand that when we wait, when, when, when there is a, a testing of our faith and there is a delay, it is so important that we remain with the same faith that we had in the beginning. Because so many times we can say that we are waiting, but when we don't have any faith anymore. So you are just surviving. What can you do? What can I do? Let me just keep on going. Maybe along the way, God will remember me. That is not how the Holy Spirit works. That is not how the name of Jesus Christ works. You have to stay excited. One year, two years, three years, you have to ask the Lord, Lord, give me grace. I'm losing my faith. Give me grace. Give me grace. You have to be in a place that you still remain excited. This gentleman here that you see in the word of God has seen Jesus Christ as a baby, but he is excited the way he says it. He has waited for the Messiah and he has seen him. And you know what he says? Now I can depart. So the miracle did not pass him by. The blessing did not pass him by when the blessing came. 
but he was able to even recognize the blessing. Now, what do I want to caution? Most of the times when we are going through a time of delayed you know, the red less response from the Lord and our faith is being tested for delayed period of times. We lose even the focus. Sometimes we don't only lose the faith, but sometimes we even lose the focus. That when the Lord answers, we might even miss it. I know, amen. <laughs> I'm going to say amen by myself. We can miss it. We can miss it when the Lord answers. We can miss it. Because you know what? We lost our faith along the way and we are just going on just because you have nothing else. You are like, what? where can I go? Let me just stay on the ball. We can also see here healing. Matthew chapter 15 verse 22 to verse 28. We can see relief and restoration also whereby and i'm going to read this one because i need us to look at relief and restoration i'm reading john chapter 11 verse 6 so when he heard that he was sick he stayed two more days in the place where he was john chapter 11 verse 32 and then when mary came where jesus was saw him she fell down at his feet saying to him lord if you had been here my brother would not have died now mary thinking jesus christ was there doing nothing and jesus christ decided you know what let me rock up now verse uh chapter uh, uh again john chapter 11 verse 43 to 44 now when he had said these things he cried with a loud voice lazarus come forth and he who had died came out bound hand foot with grave clothes his face was wrapped with a cloth jesus said to them lose him and let him go so we can see a relief and resurrection that can happen you know though people had delayed and people had waited for jesus but we can see a positive result of the holy spirit we also see another which is the gift of the holy spirit luke chapter 24 and verse 14 and behold i send the promise of my father upon you but tarry in the city of jerusalem until you are endured with power from on high you know every time i think about uh, the the disciples and the apostles of christ they had to wait somewhere you know they when jesus had gone they had to wait they had to tarry the word of god said tarry wait for the promise that I have given you. Wait for the Holy Spirit to come down. So there was still a, a delayed, you know, a delayed testing of their faith and they had to wait. And so many times I have this imagination in my mind that maybe some of them went out, you know, imagine, imagine some of these apostles were fathers, you know, <laughs> they are seated in that upper room. They are waiting. They are waiting on the Holy Spirit. Wives are coming. Kids are going like, what is daddy doing in there? Do we even understand the significance of them waiting? Waiting there because Jesus Christ has said, tarry and wait for the Holy Spirit. The Spirit of God that we have today, they had to wait. They had to wait. There was a delay, but look at the amazing results that came around. Can also be for deliverance, you know. Um, Acts chapter 12, verse 5 to verse 7. And that you can read because I'm running behind time. It can also be escape, you know. And we can see here Acts chapter 27, verse 20 to verse 44. I'm going to read from verse 42 to verse 44. And the soldier's plan was to kill the prisoners, lest any of them should swim away and escape. Verse 43, but the centrum wanting to save Paul kept them from their purpose, commanded that those who could swim should jump overhead first and get to land. And the rest, some on board, some on parts of the ship, so it was that they all escaped safely to the land. You know that word escaped safely to the land. There was such a delay when they were on that ship. And you can get time and read about this experience that they had on the ship with Paul. And Paul the whole time was telling them, you know, if you guys had listened to me in the beginning, I had warned about this. These men even went into a forced fasting. I don't know. <laughs> Paul, I can't call it a forced fasting until Paul asked them to actually eat. But you know what? Even though there was such a delayed testing of their faith, we can see that they escaped death and they got to land safely. What are the results of um testing of our faith number one it produces trust and it produces patience. james chapter one and verse three knowing that the testing of your faith your faith 
produces patience. Let us understand it is not an easy process for your faith to be tested, but it produces amazing patience. It produces trust. I have gotten to a place where I am still on my journey there with the Lord, but I've gotten to the place where I don't panic. And I'm saying it from truthfully from my heart. I've gotten to a place where I don't panic. Even when um I expected an answer, I expected breakthrough, I expected blessing, and it doesn't come. You know what? But how do how, how have I gotten to that? Because I have gone through a process whereby my faith has been tested. Uh, when I was younger in the Lord, believe me, I would have panicked. I would have panicked over anything that takes so long for the Lord to answer. But you know, as we grow older in the Lord, you become more patient. You start to trust the Lord. You start to say, you know what? The Lord will come through. I say this all the time when I'm praying for people and they say, no, how come? I say, you know what? Trust the Lord. He will come through. And that is what we learn when we actually, our faith is tested. It also produces a, a perseverance. Romans chapter 5, verse 3 to verse 4. It allows a greater flow of God's glory. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 7. But we have this treasure in heaven in our three vessels that the excellence of the power may be of God and not of us. Seriously, it allows a greater flow of God's glory. The moment our faith is tested, you get to a place whereby the Lord can glorify himself to the highest. You know, you remove yourself. You know, you have waited for so long. You have been tested for so long. You start to remove yourself out of any work of God. You start to say, you know what? This has been God and it's only God and I give him all the glory. And that is why we are saying it allows a greater flow of God's glory when we learn and when we persevere and when we stand in that time of our faith being tested. And still when our faith is being tested, I want to finish by saying, keep on praising the Lord. Keep on worshiping the Lord. Keep on reading the word of God. Keep on fellowshipping. Even the time you might be in might be a time of wilderness, but keep on worshiping. Keep on praising. And it's so important that we run away from mumbling, complaining, and looking for all ways of having a pity party. Look at me. I have been waiting for this long. So and so just had this amazing miracle, this amazing testimony. I find that so many times we compare ourselves to so many others in the body of Christ or other Christians. Let us understand our walks are personal with the Lord. Our walks are personal with Jesus Christ. He knows you. He has not forsaken you. He has not left you. He is walking with you. And you know what? Your work is different from another person. Let us learn to appreciate what the Lord is doing in other people, but also learn to praise the Lord for the miracle that is coming ahead. Let us learn to worship the Lord for who he is, not for the things that he's going to give us, but for who he is. He is God Almighty. He is love. He is patient. He is mercy. Let us learn to worship him for who God is and not for the victories he's going to give us, for the blessings he's going to give us. You know what? We are going to be in a place of growth. We are going to be established on the right foundation. If we learn to be in that place, let us learn not to be envious, but really appreciate what God is doing in other people's life. Our turn is coming. So, summary, don't back off from your faith test. Do not back off from your faith test. Test. I know right now I need to close. We are on 43 minutes. So do not back off when you are going through your faith test. Do not back off. Ask grace from the Holy Spirit. Ask him grace. He's the one who gives you the grace. Ask him for mercy. Let him uphold you. Let him carry you. Even when you feel it is such a big test, ask him. He cannot test you beyond what you can be able to contain. Mighty Father, we thank you for your grace. We thank you, Holy Spirit, for your goodness. We thank you that these are very difficult topics that we are teaching right now. The testing of our faith, mighty Lord. I know someone out there watching me right now. Others who are going to come online to study what I've just talked about. Mighty Father might be going through a time of wilderness. Might be going through a time of testing of their faith. Others might be going ahead and in time 
this process might come their way but it is my prayer right now for that one who is discouraged for that one who feels like they can't go on anymore they feel like giving in almighty lord and backing back and backing away lord i pray for your strength i pray for your holy spirit to hold them i pray for your guidance i pray mighty king of glory that you will pour your grace into their life mighty father to walk mighty lord and allow to finish the testing of their faith for it is going to produce so much glory to your name mighty father i pray mighty lord that you will help us when our faith is being tested oh god to put our eyes on you jesus and not to put our eyes on anyone in the name of our lord jesus christ we pray amen i want to finish by saying fix your eyes on jesus fix your eyes on jesus when your faith is being tested fix your eyes on jesus he's the only one who knows he has been there whatever you are going through he has been there and he knows what you are going through fix your eyes on him call on him he will give you grace to persevere and to go through and then the end it will be amazing when you see the victory the testimony the glory that you will be lifting and giving to the lord have a beautiful evening and Hope to see you next time. Sorry, students, what I'm going to do, I'm going to check if there's any questions. So what I'm going to do, I will answer them on Telegram. Have a nice evening and good evening.